Titan is a board game for two to six players. Play occurs both on a main master board and on smaller maps called Battlelands where combat takes place. Each player builds up armies called legions and uses them to attack their opponents. Each player has a special unit called the Titan. The Titan is like a king in chess. If a player loses their Titan, they are eliminated. The game ends when only one Titan remains. Players earn points by defeating opponents' legions in combat. Points make a player's Titan stronger and also award powerful characters called angels. Points do not directly affect the game outcome. Players with fewer points can win games, as long as they control the last remaining Titan on the board. Legions increase in strength by adding more and more powerful characters. Legions can add a stronger character by bringing a certain number of specific weaker characters to the right location on the board. This is called mustering. Only legions that move in a given turn can muster more characters. Let's watch player one use his turn. Player one will split, move, battle, and muster with his legions. He begins the turn by deciding whether to split any legions. Legions can have a maximum of seven characters, so player one will need to split this legion if he wants to muster with it later. Player one moves his legions across the master board according to the die roll. He must move at least one legion each turn. Each legion that moves travels as many spaces as the die roll, no partial moves, unless it encounters an enemy legion, in which case it stops and a battle is initiated. Once in motion, a legion continues along one of three tracks. An outer track, which flows clockwise. A middle track, which flows counterclockwise. And an inner track, which can flow in either direction. Legions that begin their turn where two tracks touch may change which track they are on. Changing to a track that is further inward than the current one is optional, but changing to a track that is further outward is forced. Legions have many options moving through towers, which are not part of any track. Player 1 chooses his moves to gain musters and improve his position. He must move one of the two legions he split earlier. For now, let's assume he does not attack with the legion in the lower left. Any legions that moved during the turn, including those that fought battles, can now muster according to the terrains on which they have landed. Only one muster can be chosen per legion. If player one decides to attack, the defending legion first has the option to flee. Fleeing forfeits any opportunity to damage the attacking legion, but the attacker only earns half points. Some characters, such as titans, are not allowed to flee. If the defender does not flee, battle begins on a battle land corresponding to the terrain on which the two legions met. There are 11 different terrains on the master board, each corresponding to a unique battle land. The battle land is oriented according to the direction from which the attacker approached. The defender always deploys at the narrower end of the battle land, while the attacker deploys at the wider end. During battle, the game enters a different play sequence limited to the attacker and defender. Each player in turn maneuvers and strikes with their legion's characters, then their opponent has a chance to strike back. Battles are limited to seven rounds of exchanges. If any defending characters remain at the end of the seventh round, the defender wins automatically but does not earn points. Again we'll follow player one. His characters can maneuver up to the number of spaces indicated by their skill, the number in the lower right. Characters can generally move in any direction, but the existence of hazards may impede their progress. Characters cannot usually move directly through occupied spaces. Some characters can fly, which allows them to pass through occupied spaces and also bypass most hazards that would otherwise slow them. A character that ends its maneuver next to an opponent must strike. Once engaged, neither character can move again until one character has been eliminated. If there is more than one option, the player may choose which to strike, but each character only strikes once in a round. 
Characters deal a number of blows equal to their power rating, the number in the lower left, each with a chance to hit related to their skill, the number in the lower right. Each character can take up to their power rating in damage. Some characters can range strike or attack from a distance. Range strikes have a maximum distance of the skill of the attacker and deal damage at half the normal power rating. Characters can only range strike if not already engaged with a melee opponent. After player 1 finishes striking, player 2 can immediately strike back. Even characters who have no hit points remaining can strike back one last time. Both the attacker and the defender have ways to add a single character to their legion mid-combat. The attacker can summon an angel from another legion on their first maneuver phase after eliminating an opposing character. The defender can add a reinforcement on the fourth maneuver phase. Reinforcements are just like mustering, so the defender must have enough living characters of the right type for the terrain. In this case, player 2 decides the Gorgon wouldn't help him win, and would only give his opponent more points. After the battle, points are awarded to the victor for all eliminated characters. Only the victor earns points. Each hundred points earns the victor one angel, and also increases the power factor of that player's titan, even if the titan was not part of that particular battle. At each 500 point mark, Rather than an angel, the victor earns an archangel, one of the most powerful units in the game. If a titan is eliminated during battle, all remaining legions for that player are removed, and the victor earns half points for them. When only one titan remains, the game is over. That completes the tutorial. Good luck and enjoy the game!